Hello and welcome to a short presentation on how to prospect for new business. Now within the business community I think there's a massive dependence by so many people on digital marketing and thinking that that is going to be the gold bullet that is going to create an avalanche of people that come towards you. But to an extent, if you get really, really good at digital marketing, you can create those conversations without a shadow of a doubt. However, the fastest way for you to accelerate your business is to pick up the phone and to actively prospect. Picking up the phone to people that are rece receptive to your call. So we do that in a certain kind of a way. So what I'm going to talk about through this presentation is how to create your goals, your sales targets, a sales plan, and then how to profile the people so that when you pick up the phone, you get a warm conversation. And the actual prospecting methods that will make picking the phone up, and I keep saying pick the phone up because it's something that so many businesses, unfortunately, just do not do. So let's kick off with the basics of what we need to have a prospecting process that actually works. Now, in a business that works, there's a formula. There's a formula that you go step by step to create a business that works. And this is that formula, the formula for a perfect business. Now, what I'm gonna do is just share with you that we always reverse engineer what it is that we're setting out to achieve. So this is why it's quite crucial that you absolutely know what it is that you want to achieve over what period of time. Because once you've got that you want to say get 20 clients over the next 30 days, and for example, that generates 10,000 pounds of income for you, well, that's the numbers. So once we know what you want, and the kind of numbers that you want, we can then start putting a plan together for to make that happen. Once we know our numbers, we've got our plan, it's absolutely crucial that you know what's happening in the marketplace, i.e. the niche that you are endeavoring to sell your products or services into. And of course, working out what the proposition is that people are gonna be very, very interested to hear. Now, the mind behind success being as crucial as it is, I think it's fair to say that we need to focus on succeeding. And we need to focus by asking a couple of key questions. The first of which is, is your client list growing? So over the last three months, has your client list grown? And has it grown at a pace that you are happy with? I have a funny feeling the answer may be no. Then that takes us to the second question. So if your client list isn't growing at the kind of speed that you want it to grow, it invokes another question. Are you the key person of influence in your particular area, i.e. your field or your geographical area? So if you're a bookkeeper, are you known as the bookkeeper within five to 10 mile radius of where you are. Or if you are, let's say, a, a telecoms company, are you known as the go-to people within uh, the niches that you operate? Again, unfortunately, I think for a lot of people, the answer is no, but that's okay. Because once we know the areas that we need to improve, we can then focus on putting the plan of action together so that we can go out and actively prospect for new clients, raising our profile as we go. So coming back to basics, let's start with what it is that you really, really want. You see, every successful entrepreneur since the dawning of time has run through this winning strategy of understanding what it is that they want, who do they need to connect with in order to get what it is that they want? Where will they find them? And when they find them, what will they say to them? And once they've had that conversation, how do you organize things and know that it's absolutely working as you want it to be? So let's stick with the central theme. What is it that we want? Well, this is where we have to get out the pen and the paper and start writing down 
what our sales targets are, those key performance indicators that tell us that we are achieving our true potential within our business. So of course, if we took, I'm gonna take a, a little bit of a fictitious line. Say we have a business and it's really looking for 20 new clients over the next 30 days. It doesn't matter, it can be over the next 12 weeks if you want. But we have to know what that number is. And I would encourage you to really push the envelope. Because if you're pushing the envelope, it causes you to go into action because you're trying to hit those targets. Now, it's no point just saying, I want 20 clients, because that in of itself doesn't actually mean a whole lot. Ideally, what we want is to know how much money is that going to generate for us. So if we know that the average client that buys service number one generates X amount and the average client number two generates X amount, then we can start to work out what the total amount of income we can expect from having attracted 20 new clients. This then causes us, we can write this down one at a time, we want so many of type one clients, so many of type two and so on. So then we have to work out what our conversion ratios are. So if we want 20 clients and we know that our closing ratio is two in three, then we need to speak to 30 people who are actively interested in what it is that we buy. And if we know to get 30 people to have really good quality conversations, we need to have 40 conversations that, that drop down. There's obviously a ratio and that would be unique to you. So to get 40 conversations, if we know that we've got to pick up the phone to very roughly 100 people because from 100 conversations we know that 40 of those will be quality conversations. So that would be a conversion of 4 in 10. Does that make sense? Good. So once we've got how many people we need to talk to, how many deals that we want, what sort of income that we want from the amount of business that we're going to write, we of course have to move to the next step, which is say, okay, so who are they? Who are the people that are actively looking for what it is that we serve them with? What do we sell? What, what's the number one thing that we solve for our customer? That's the question. And to do a little deep dive on that, I think we need to look at actually diving deep on what service each type of client, most, most businesses have three types of client that tend to buy one of three types of services. And we have to deep dive and find out well, what specifically is the reason they buy that. Do we save them time? Do we accelerate them? Do we make their life easier on a day-to-day -day basis? Whatever that may be, that is what we need to know at this point of the conversation because that then falls into us fully 100% understanding what their dominant buying motive actually is. Once we have that, then we know that we can put, pour that into a marketing message or your central pitch. And that central pitch, when you're having a conversation, let that be a networking uh, event or whether you're picking up the phone, which is where we're driving towards, needs to be concise, absolutely on point. This is not a Wikipedia moment where you tell them war and peace about all the features and benefits of what it is that you do because, of course, they're not really that interested. They're only interested in that one particular thing that is interesting to them. That's where you'll get the engagement. And then once you've got the engagement, it's about then segueing that elegantly and easily into action. So with our central point at hand, we need to go and find them. So this is another part of research. And it's an element that a lot of business owners just don't do. They don't take the time out. So, well, OK, where are my customers looking what are they watching? What are they listening to? This is where we need to be right from the get-go. So let's immediately go to our prospecting plan and our plan of action. Now, the prospecting plan hasn't really changed since the dawning of time, and I suspect it won't change no matter what happens with technology. 
the easiest way to start a business or to recalibrate a business is to go back to basics. And that starts with the people that you already know, your existing database, the people that know you best. And begin by calling those guys. And we're going to run into the sequence of how we do that in just a moment. The next important part is to, is, is to create a list of key referrers, people that talk to your client that may sell a different service or offering. By getting in bed with people that sell into the same marketplace, you can cross-pollinate with each other, which is why I encourage absolutely everybody to create a group of at least four or five people that all sell into the same niche with different services and offerings. Next on the list, LinkedIn. Very powerful, very, very powerful um, medium. But you have to know how to use it on purpose. And there's a whole raft of characters that can help you to fine tune that. And we can certainly do a little bit of training in, in, in a different uh, presentation that we do. But LinkedIn is it powerful because you can get right to the decision maker. So once you've started with um, process one, process two, process three, then there's the fourth process, the fourth method to prospect. And that is to go through your vertical lists. So. If you've been in business for a number of years, you look at your database and you look at what they do, you may find that there is a segment that takes up 20, 30, 40% of all of your sales, of your services. So, for example, if you're an accountant, it may well be that 30, 40% of your sales are with service providers. Well, then I'm going to use that as a vertical list to go straight up and leverage my existing connections to go get new connections. Does that make sense? Good. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This is the method that all successful entrepreneurs use in order to build wealth creating businesses. So now you've got your method. You get on the phone and you call them. So what do you say? Well, here's a very simple strategy that you can fill in the blacks, the blanks. It's really just a case of you piecing together your particular template to talk to your particular market. So we'll start with a core strategy. The very first thing that I would do if I was to call you is to give you a call and say, hi, do you know what? We've been connected for some time now and I just wanted to touch base and find out what's happening in your particular market and if there's anything else I might be able to help with uh, you with. And then I would quickly sidestep that to keep the rapport going because I, I really want them to know that it's not just a sales call. I am actually genuinely interested in them and what is going on in their world. So that might sound something like this. Um, so look, uh, uh, hi Mike, I've just given you a quick call. I haven't been connected with you in quite a while. Haven't spoken in quite a while. Just wanted to find out what's happening in your world and how have you been see we segued to the second question so how have things been over the last five six months and, and now just coming out of lockdown he'll share those experiences we'll have a conversation back and forward before i get to the second tier question by which i mean he or she might say to me well look you know it's tough out there at the moment we've got a couple of people on furlough and We've got X and Y and Z, and I said, well, okay. So tell me, what's your plan of action to, to to grow over the next three, four months? Or what's your plan of action, depending on your subject, in regards to your subject? But by taking that second level of questions even deeper, you are, by default, creating more rapport. Now that you've had a nice, long conversation you can find a point, and this is all about timing, where you can segue the conversation based off of what you've been talking about so far into how you might be able to help them over the next couple of months, over the next couple of weeks, or even today. And from that, ask a closing questions, a closing question, sorry, which is to say, 
is that something I might be able to help you with? And be quiet. Ask the question. Because you're looking to make an appointment to do business. So you might ask a question, for example, around, do you think it, there'd be value in us sitting down having a cup of coffee or going into a Zoom meeting and, and just throwing a couple of ideas around? If the answer is yes, great. Put it in the diary. Make it happen. Lastly, I just want to share with you organising your week, making sure that you're putting a certain segment of time into your diary, an AM or a PM, or maybe two AMs or PMs, in a week where all you are going to do is pick up the phone, make some phone calls to make it happen. So that's it from me. I hope that was of uh, value to you in helping you to think about prospecting as an easy thing as opposed to something that's horrible and hard. And I'll just finish off by sharing with you that over the last 10 years of working with oh, hundreds and hundreds of different businesses, generally one of the questions that I always arrive at is, tell me, how many no decisions have you got? And quite often the answer is, well, what do you mean by no decisions? Well, how many people are you talking to that you're in the process of putting a deal together where you're going to work with them, serve them? How many people have not made the decision because people are on furlough, they're going on holiday, their business partner's away, or whatever number of reasons mean that they have not pushed the button? Or said to you, actually, it's not for them. I'm willing to bet that on your table, if you was to write down a list of all the people that are in the sales process but haven't made a decision, you're going to come up with 10, 20, maybe even 30 people that haven't made a decision yet. I would start there. I would pick up the phone there and begin a conversation around helping them to make a decision. Yes or no? So that's it from me, John Kelly. I hope there was something in there that was of value. If you want to find out more about what we do to help business owners and entrepreneurs to thrive while everyone else is just surviving, please do have a look at johnfketley.com or our Entrepreneur Training Academy, which is at salesmastersguild.com. That's salesmastersguild.com. And I look forward to seeing you soon on the networking circuit.